Hey everybody, how we doing? It's me, Joe Sires, back here for the Music Factory Studios. Today, let's take a look at something really cool. I've got some extra time on my hands while I have a two-hour concert <laughs> that is rendering in DaVinci Resolve on the Mac. So, to pass the time, I grabbed the old iPad Pro and I had bought ToneStack Pro, the new version of ToneStack. Oh, I don't know, about a month or two ago and I hadn't had a chance to really sit around and, and check it out. Now I have the original version of tone stack here. And, uh, as you can see here on the screen up in the top right corner here, I'm now moving it around, but I didn't cover it on any reviews before just for the simple fact of there were a couple things that I really, really didn't like about it. And it wasn't that tone stack was bad, but when you compare it to other, you know, really good amp sims on iPad, it was lacking in a few departments, but I think it was a lot older than a lot of them. Um, so, you know, everyone knows that I use Amplitude live. I've used the iPad and the Mac version both live, and I really like that. And the problem with a lot of these amp sims is twofold. Usually the distortions are not really all that great or they lack the ability to have dual channel amplifiers, which makes absolutely no sense because when you're on a mobile platform, kind of the whole idea is to use it live. I would think that's how most people I know use them. Um, I'm not the exception when it comes to people using um, digital setups live. There are more people than you could imagine playing in bars across the world now, clubs, uh, even fly rigs that are using stuff like an iPad or a MacBook. So there was a couple things that were lacking in a few different apps and it was like dual channel amps, or if you don't have dual channel amps, you gotta have really good distortion pedals and tone stack was okay, but it wasn't up to the kind of level I would hope it would be. Now, in the past year to two years, we've really come a long way. You've got people like Nimbrini, um, IK Multimedia. You also have Bias, which is out there, and that's a really cool app. Um, there's some new kids on the block like Amp Stamp and uh, V Stomp Amp. And I can't remember who makes V Stomp Amp, but it's a, you would know that brand as well. And if I open it, it'll kind of throw the whole thing out of whack here. But uh, it's it's one of those things where if you want to be relevant, you've got to update and keep up kind of with the times and the technology that keeps getting better. The chips inside of these iPad Pros are as good as any i7 9th gen or 10th gen on any laptop. So it's kind of insane how good these chips are. And... So I grabbed ToneStack Pro. I only have the basic ToneStack Pro setup. So if we look at what I have, basically what I have is, let's make this a little bit bigger if we can. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Basically what I have is just your basic, I got it for half price. I think I got it for like $1.99 or $2.99. <laughs> Now, I bought everything in the last version of ToneStack, but I hadn't even had a chance to play the basic version of this new ToneStack Pro. So basically what you get is three, six, nine, ten 10 amplifiers. One of them's a bass amplifier. 10 amps, you get 10 cabinets and a bass cabinet, or nine cabinets and a bass cabinet. You get a wah, two EQs, and two auto wah slash filters, auto filters. You get chorus flanger phaser vibrato tremolo a volume pedal which you could use for a boost live if you put it at the end of your chain or something or in front of the uh the uh, cabinet sim and uh, an acoustic simulator pedal now there's a ton of other stuff that i just don't have and i'm kind of going to wait till it goes on sale <laughs> there's also uh, a pitch octave a down octave pedal that you can get um, there is, what do we have here? Two delays and 
no three delays you got a tape echo a delay a rack delay spring reverb a rack reverb and a regular reverb i think i'm using the rack reverb right now and we have a noise gate a compressor and i'm really really impressed with how much better the compressors are now this regular compressor i've got it cranked and hitting it pretty hard and it works great okay the rack compressor works really good too so i'm kind of um excited to see if they've made the older effects better because like the comp sustain was eh. the squash rocket was really the only thing i could use the nashville sky didn't do anything and i think maybe the developers of this this platform tone stack are so used to most guitar players plugging in an audio interface and turning it up when in all honesty you should leave the volume all the way down and just switch to high z and turn your guitar on and you say well i can't hear it yes you can you got to run it through the amp the app should be expecting that level you hear that that is pretty quiet isn't it but if we look at my input we'll show i'll show my input here here's my input okay the input gain is at zero. Why? Because I'm in a high Z input. It's not going up or down. It doesn't need to be turned up. It's feeding the converter the right level. So if you've got like a, a Scarlet 2i2 or a, um, you know, whatever audio interface you're using, just leave it at zero. Just turn on high Z turn on and here's what happens put in a noise gate put in a compressor now, as you can hear i'm hitting the compressor at the same level the same level it's coming out of the compressor it's going in but i'm actually hitting this thing stupid hard okay and then the amp is where i get my gain from because that's how an amp works okay but in the distortions i was really surprised at how well they worked um before on the older tone stacks it was they were okay basically what you wanted to do is just run a lot more gain into the front of the amp but what happens is you get such a level change between your clean channel and your hot channel it was unusable for live so in this version the distortions are way better my only pick is or my only problem with like this metal distortion when you in initiate it and add it i'll start put these back to their initial position right this is the eq curve that you get listen to how bad this sounds <laughs> Now we'll put it back to where I had it. So it cutting mids can always be an issue with especially with distortion. <laughs> Sounds like I just turned it up, but I didn't. All I did was add the mid range. Guitars are all mid range. <laughs> So, uh, you just have to, if, if the initial sound, when you stick the pedal onto your chain, 
sounds bad, just kind of set the EQ or whatever it is to kind of like 12 o'clock and then work with it. Ignore the, the, the settings it has when you initially set it up. The amp was kind of the same way, <laughs> but that's okay. You know, I'm going to set it up the way I like it, but the distortions are pretty good. Now, here's the Tube Screamer. We'll pull the gain down here. So, I mean, as you can hear, it's it's a lot better than it was before. Each one of the distortions felt like it would kind of crap out pretty quickly on you. The more, you know, distortion or gain you pushed into it, it just felt like they were they were being hit too hard. And, and you know, I'm hitting it, the input at such a low level, it's like, uh, what's going on? Now, granted, I'm hitting the compressor pretty hard, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Because I'm not adding any gain coming out of the compressor. So it's just one of those things. The initial distortion you'll see on the initial patch is this one. Let's pull the gain down here so it's even ground. cool part is if you're just going to use it for a distortion setup pull the output volume down of your amp and push the gain into it then you'll start to get a distortion that's more similar to what you kind of expect so as you can hear i just changed strings too <laughs> but uh if you're using it to record with right so if you're using it to record in like GarageBand, because it's now an audio unit as well, which is good job to Yonak for making it an audio unit, okay? But uh, if you're using it that way, man, you can get some pretty good tones out of this thing for the price. You know, I think normally it sells for like, I don't know, uh, nine ninety nine. I think I yeah. I think because I think I paid like four ninety nine or five ninety nine. It was fifty percent off because of their like ten year anniversary, and that's pretty good, you know. But even at the regular price, it's a steal for what you get right out of the box. Okay, now. <laughs> The delays sound good. The reverbs sound really good. When you use them together, it's really good. So we'll... just sound really really good
you have three microphones here, and I wish they would have really worked on the microphones. More than anything, I wish they would have really worked on these microphones because there's such a drastic difference between the 57, the 414, and uh, what is this, an R121, something like that, a ribbon. The 414 and the ribbon, or the condenser and the ribbon sound far too close and then the 57 sounds so drastically different that it's kind of like uh, I wish they would have took the 414 and kind of worked with the curve of it or the condenser and that would have been kind of cool now you can do like stereo setups with the ABY switch because you do get in the utilities an ABY switch, which would let you do things like two different um, cabinets. Now I haven't really explored in how you do all that, so we'll be sticking with basically one amp here until I learn my way around. But you can move the mic around. by touching it and moving your finger up and down or left and right. defaults to the 57 so i mean it's up to you but all these effects are really good So the chorus sounds really, really good. Let's see. Here's a flanger. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That's nice. down here just a fuzz see what other modulation effects sound like. Let's see what else we got here. We got a phaser. That's pretty good. 
go full depth here. I think a smoother triangle would have probably been a little bit better because of you can hear the transient hitting kind of hard. Bop, 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 bop. But you can solve that just by turning the depth down. Which I have to say, Yonak has done a really good job here at making Tone Stack Pro really a lot better than what it was before. Now, there's nothing wrong with the older Tone Stack Pro if you just want something to practice with, right? If you just want an amp sim to plug in your focus right, you know. Uh, 2i2 and and just sit around and jam with some headphones on that's probably perfectly fine but i would i would suggest getting tone stack pro over the regular tone stack just because of the quality of these new effects all right we've got a tremolo oh yeah straight up old school country <laughs> good trim low we got the vibrato regular volume pedal which has linear and exponential volume I'd leave it on linear especially if you're going to use it live now let's check this out here this is their acoustic acoustic sizer my question is is it supposed to be Okay, should it go before the amp? Probably. So if you're going to use one of the amp CMs, probably put this pedal in front. It's always good to use... In between spot on your guitar so like if you're playing a strat play in either the second or the fourth position which will be out of phase one plug in or one pickup in phase one out of phase that gives you more of a uh, how should i put it it gives you more of a acoustic style sound anyway compared to being like on the bridge pickup which i'm using a, a humbucker but i can cool split it here Versus, here is the out of phase version. There's position four versus the neck pickup. 
So what I'm playing is an Aria Mac 2. It's the Mac series from Aria. It's not an Aria Pro 2, but a regular Aria. Uh, a Japanese made guitar. These were popular in the uh, 70s through the mid-90s. I grew up playing these types of guitars, and I really, really like them. And I got this one. It is a humbucker that you can split, and which has a coil tap, and then two single coils. It's a super strat. And I really like this guitar. And I'm really surprised how well that sounds going through the amp simulation, too. Now, the more air you add, the more... Here's the default setting. The more air you add, the more noise you're going to have, no matter how quiet your guitar is. Let me take the compressor out, which is probably... Yeah, that's good. It's a little bit better. Let's try it in some different positions. So, bridge pickup, full humbucker. Bridge position with single coil or split coil to a single. Okay, that's too bright. <laughs> position two, humbucker, full, and the middle single coil. I'm going to split the humbucker now. Middle position. It's because my amp has a little too much gain on it there. Yeah, that's a little better. And fourth position, which is the neck pickup and the middle pickup. So that sounds just really good. up I think I like the, the in between the neck pickup and the middle pickup too much air it's a little too bright Which, those are some cool options, you know, if you're wanting to use these as your daily driver. Let's see what it sounds like after the amp. Yeah, it's nearly the same kind of deal. All right. So, let's check out some of the other amplifiers real quick. We'll get rid of that, just so it's not a chain. All right. Now, that was the Rock Maker. Let's check out the, um, here's one called Colossal Gain. And let's match it with its correct cabinet. Ooh, I dig that one. That sounds pretty good. It's got two gains. Now, this looks like it's a little more um, uh, normalized in the way most people would set up a guitar. A guitar amplifier, so I'll pull the volume back there just a fuzz. Let's crank the the gains. Gain two and gain one. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
add our distortion pedal in. Well, that's see what I'm talking about with this gain. And the less of this gain you have, the problem with a lot of these distortion pedals is they're they're just a fuzz too bright. Now you have one thing. Let me cover this real quick. In the settings, you have three output limiters. One is a standard output limiter, which prevents you from clipping. The other two are tape simulations. So. As you can hear, tape two is a little brighter. There's a little bit of difference between them. Tape two sounds more like uh, higher speed tape, like 15 or 30 ips, whereas tape one sounds more like maybe three and three quarters or seven and a half. Standard is fine but if you like to get that kind of squishy tape kind of sound and feel to the way your guitar is playing you may want to use like tape one versus tape two and standard so let's do this let's bring this back in the amp because amp distortion usually on these sims is way better let's see if we can hear a difference between the three limiters first we'll start off with standard switch to the bridge pickup and you'll really be able to tell what the different tones are that's coming through here. of dig tape too to be honest with you but they're all great and if you watch your output you could use none that way there is no limiting happening but standard limiting seems to be pretty transparent
Tape 2 gives it the feel of having like a two power amp because there's a little bit of saturation and kind of clamping going on, a little bit of compression. Tape 1's like over sag, like too much sag in an amp. Plus you lose a little bit of volume with Tape 1. Standard just feels like you have, you know, a standard clipper on the uh, end of a chain. Yeah. So it's up to you. You choose which tone you like and think about it like this. Basically, those three output limiters are like having three different styles of output power amp, you know, sag. Tape one is going to be the heaviest sag. Tape two is going to be a little bit of sag. And standard is going to be the least amount of sag. And then none. I wouldn't run it on none or no limiting because you may have a digital clipping happen during playback and then that could be a big problem, okay? You also have the uh, processing quality, good, better, best, depending on your iPad or your iPhone. This runs on an iPhone as well. Um, choose what works best for you. I'm using best. I'm on an iPad Pro. This has an A12X chip in it, so it's an 8-core. It's pretty much the precursor to the M1. It's a powerful chip, and it has no problems running this at all. Now, I'm running, right now, I'm running AUM at, I think, 256 uh, sample uh, buffer sample size at 48K. I'm having no issues. If you run into using AUM as like your jamming application to sit around and play guitar on, if you find that you're having some issues with a little bit of latency or something, turn off latency compensation and you might it might be a little more comfortable. Try it off and on and see what happens. And, uh, you know, you might find that it helps you out to have more of a natural feel. Now, I know I could feel the latency at 512, but at 256, I don't feel it. At uh, 128, you're surely not going to be able to tell. Anything less than 20 milliseconds, 99% of people can't tell it, okay, between 18 and 20 milliseconds because you're still in the Haas factor. So if you were, you know, 6, 8, 10 feet away from a guitar amplifier, you're going to have a few milliseconds of latency between what comes out of the amplifier and the point it hits your ears. So it's just one of those things that you just have to adjust it to where, you know, you're comfortable with it. But don't try to run it at 32 and then put it on 64 and say 64 samples and, and you say, well, I can hear this and it's three milliseconds. Okay, then you must play with your ear on your amplifier cabinet because <laughs> that's just nutty. And I see people come in the studio all the time with that issue. So if you've got a pair of headphones on and you think you've got some latency actually going on in AUM, you can go in here and there's some stereo processing options. See this one that says invert phase? Just invert the phase of the channels here, right? And that's probably the issue. Sometimes if there's a little bit of latency and you've got headphones on, the latency causes it to be out of phase with what you feel from the vibration of like a guitar or through a vocal microphone. If you're speaking through a microphone, the the latency that there are the few milliseconds of latency will cause the audio that's coming through the headphones to be out of phase with what you're speaking through a microphone or feeling in your hands. So just by flipping the phase, it'll put the headphones back in phase with the resonation, whether that's in your skull or vibrating through your body. And that's just a normal thing. I find all the time that guys that use in-ear monitors, when they're on stage singing, they'll say, I can't, I can't really hear myself. And you'll give them volume or e you know, try to EQ around, and it's still, they're like, I can't hear myself. I just walk over and flip the phase, and they're like, ah, oh, there it is. It's like, oh, yeah. The resonance in your skull was out of phase with what was coming through your headphones. That's just normal. That can be as low as one millisecond, and you you could you would notice that. 
But as long as you're in phase, you're probably not going to notice 20 milliseconds of latency. <laughs> because that's, you know, normally 10 feet. You know, 10, 12, whatever it is. But back to Tone Stack Pro. If you're looking for a good, you know, inexpensive practice amp or something to, you know, jam with at, at band practice through in-ears and you don't want to lug your amplifier around, this and an ivory blue board could probably be your complete setup. Now, I like to use Amplitude. That's just me. I've grown accustomed to it, and the iRig blue Blueboard works perfectly with it. Basically, an iPad and a small audio interface and an iRig blue Blueboard and some cheapo, um, you know, wireless guitar setups. You know, the little $30 wireless guitar uh, plugins, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> wireless guitar setups, um, work perfectly as you know a jamming rig, something you can drag to practice. I've got to the point I wouldn't even take an amplifier out. I just started taking amplitude because they had a Mesa Boogie collection, and that's what I was dragging out anyway. So it didn't really matter. It sounded so close that no one could tell, and most people are are inebriated enough in in most clubs that <laughs> they don't notice some people will be kind of smart and walk up and go like where's your amplifier and then you point at an ipad and they're like whoa <laughs> but the one thing i like about being able to play like this is it sounds the same no matter where i'm at whether i'm in a club or at, at practice or out in a live festival setting or in a theater or you know even in an arena the sound is going to recall exactly the same. I'm not going to have an issue with like a lot of the 100 watt power amp or the 100 watt guitar amps. When you plug them into different places, different, you know, clubs and, and American Legions, VFWs, those type of places that have been there since the end of the Second World War, sometimes you can't get enough power in some of these places and the amp just won't feel right. But with an iPad, I need what? nine volts 12 volts something like that with those power supplies and you know it's the same everywhere i go and that's awesome instant recallability too so i don't have that problem of taking my amp putting it in the car getting it out hooking it all up and then realize oh no all my settings have changed and then i'm trying to change 50 knobs i basically just hit a button it opens up to exactly where i left off and i'm ready to rock and roll in you know five minutes takes me longer to hook up the three cables <laughs> or four cables it takes to to set it up than anything else but tone stack pro is great i think you can't go wrong getting this application So grab it today. I think the extra stuff inside of, of Tone Stack is like 50 bucks or something right now. Sometimes it goes on sale. So you can catch it for a little bit less than that. But it's worth every penny. So I've got all the Yonak apps. I'm pretty sure I do. We'll look and see. But uh, I think I have all the Yonak apps except for an, an older... Tonac? Yonak. Why did we do Tonac? <laughs> but I think I have all of the uh, the Yonak apps that are out there. Um, Rock Synth is awesome. All of their their apps are just tremendously good. There's there's nothing wrong with any of them. You can't go wrong with any of them. Here we go. Oh, let's reconnect. Reconnect. Why are you hating on me? I don't know. Oh well, I have them. <laughs> Let's go audio unit extensions. Let's go all the way down to Yonak. 
I've got Rock Synth, Tone Stack Pro. I've also got their synthesizers. Um, if let me look down here, I've Galileo, Casper, Cauldron, and Magellan Two. I think the only one I don't have is the uh, the the Dobro app or whatever it's called, the steel guitar, and uh, the older version of the Galileo organ. That's all I don't have. I really like this company. I love their synthesizers. I use those live when I play synths live. Um, I really like the Cauldron app. I think that is a killer synthesizer. So if you're looking for a guitar amp, this is the way to go right here. Tone Stack Pro, it works great. It's an audio unit, AUV3, so it'll work in GarageBand, Cubasis, Aria, Aria, um, what are the other DAWs? Uh, you know, I don't know the, any of the other ones. Uh, and uh, there's one called like Beatmaker. If it takes AUs, you could use this there too. Um, it works in AUM, and I'm sure it works in the other DAW app. Let's see here. Eight Matrix. I'm sure it works there. Oh, in Intrack Pro, uh, it'll work in Intrack Pro. Um, and I'm sure you know you it'll do anything you need it to do as far as guitar is concerned. So if you're kind of on the fence like, well, I've got the the guitar amps inside a garage band, these are better. But I'll just be honest with you. These are better than the 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 amps from garage band because those amps are from like Logic 8 and they're pretty old including the pedals. So the amps inside of GarageBand for iPad are from Logic 8, which would be around 2007 or 8. And it was updated in Logic 9, and it hasn't really had an update through Logic 10. And Logic 10 has been out since 2013, so eight years. So give or take, those amps are 15 years old, give or take a few years. So they're pretty old, whereas Tone Stack is less than two months old, this Tone Stack Pro and these new effects and amps. So you're going to get better tone. It's going to feel more like a real amp, or at least it's going to feel like your favorite digital processor. If you're used to like Boss or, or you know any of those type of processors, don't go out and spend $3,000 on a floor setup like the... Um, uh, there's a bunch of them out now and I won't name drop any of these companies because some of them are really good. Some of them are okay. They're more hype than, than sound. But if you've got an iPad laying around and it still, you know, does iOS 14 or 15, just try some of these apps out. <laughs> you could just about buy all of the guitar apps on the app store for the iPad and an iRig blue board and an audio interface for the cost of some of these guitar floor processors. And you would have far more options. You could use audio units besides what's in there. So you're really limited with those, those digital floor units, whereas something like this, I can use any of these effects wherever I want to. Okay? I mean, I can use anything. I can use DDMF plugins. I can use Eventide like the micro pitch. Let's just stick the micro pitch in here. Turn the app back on. And let's say I wanted to use the micro pitch. So I could program it to the iRig Blueboard. When I touch one of the pedals, this comes up, and that's my chorus pedal. And use an even tie micro pitch. You could have a whole even tied pedal setup, really. And I only have a couple of them, but there is, you know, numerous effects from some of your favorite, you know, plug-in companies like FabFilter, um, you know, and some companies that are kind of iOS only or not iOS, but iPad and iOS only, uh, blue Magoo, which makes some really cool effects and EQs, uh, burns audio, which makes a really cool granular type effects. Um, Calium audio, 
Chow DSP, which has a Centaur clone that works not on the CPU, but it works with the neural engines inside of these newer Apple Silicon CPUs. And I'm, it's it it and the tape model plugin are two of the only effects I know that tap into that neural ASIC inside of that CPU. And if that just went over your head, I'm sorry, but if you use plugins, you know that each plugin takes up CPU usage. These don't. They use the neural engine that Apple keeps talking about in these new chips. The 16-core neural engine in the M1 and M1 Pro and M1 Max, and they're free on the Mac side. I think they were like $0.99 cents, uh, for iPad, but they tap into that type of, of effect, and they can run off traditional, which is CPU, or neural, which doesn't use the CPU, so it saves your CPU cycles for other things. That's really awesome. So you've got stuff like that. Even tied, as I mentioned a minute ago, um, there's, you know, other great brands out. DDMF, who makes, you know, some just outstanding EQs and compressors and limiters. Even tied, we said, FabFilter, we said, um, there's also the friend Anton. This chorus is probably the absolute... The best chorus I believe I've ever heard. <laughs> it sounds like an old school tri chorus. There is, I mean, just a plethora of, you can, I set up a talk box with an iPad to do some Joe Walsh and uh, Do You Feel Like We Do by Peter Frampton at a festival, a local festival show they were like can you do do you feel like we do and i'm like um and i was like how can i do this on an ipad you know i knew it could be done i just didn't know how to do it and there was a vocoder called dervoco i can't remember the name of the company but i guess i could open it here and it would probably tell me who they are uh no deck on it put your name on your plugins people come on but uh, i set it up to where when I spoke through one microphone, it would kick on the vocoder through the guitar amp, and it sound, it was just like having a talk box. The only difference is I didn't have to put a tube in my mouth and go through the whole rigmarole of setting up a uh, talk box. I was able to do that on an iPad. Can you do that with any of those floor model uh, setups from Boss and other companies? Not really. And I mean, you know, and there's nothing wrong with those. Okay, nothing at all. But uh, sometimes you can do a lot more with these things than you can with those. Those are very limited. Those are basically little computers that do one thing, and they run a guitar amp. Whereas this can do numerous other things. It can be a synth and guitar rig, which is what it does for me. Now, sometimes I'll run my guitar through my MacBook and run this for the synthesizers. But I've done both through AUM and been perfectly fine and had no issues whatsoever. Uh, there's Clevgrand, which has a plethora of plugins. There's also, you know, Lost in the 70s is now on iOS or iPad OS. Nimbrini, everybody in the guitar world knows about Nimbrini. Nimbrini has some just amazing, amazing guitar amps and, and, and things of that nature. I'm going to make a video on, on the Nimbrini stuff just because there's something that needs to be fixed and I think I need to bring attention to it. But these are all, you know, audio units. So you can use them as plugins or in something like AUM as a way to, you know, set up a guitar rig with, you can have the whole Nimbrini set up and use, you know, a whole collection of this stuff. Perfectly fine. I'd like to see them bring out an app to where you could load just the Nimbrini stuff in it and control it with MIDI. That would be just really, really handy. I would probably switch to that from Amplitude just because of the routing I could do. And I really like their their Cali uh, Mesa Boogie clone. It feels and sounds really good. You know, and as you can see, there's numerous other plugins and there's you know amp stamps here there's some stuff by tc uh helicon or tc electronics um you know and yonak 
So if you're looking for something to sit around and play guitar on and you don't want to spend a grand on a digital setup just to plug your headphones in or you don't want to buy some little small amp that's going to sound like an AM radio and you've got an iPad or even an iPhone, just go in the app store and you get an audio interface and you know the ipad pro uses USB-C. the newer ipads use USB-C. and if yours has lightning they sell a lightning connector at, at your local walmart or big box store it's called the camera connection kit i used one of those on the older school old school regular 300 dollars ipads i played with one of those live for a couple of years and i switched to this larger uh 12.9 inch ipad pro for one reason I'm blind as a bat. <laughs> so it makes it easier for me to see things. But can't say enough good things about Yonak and Tonestack Pro. I'm pretty pretty impressed by how much they've improved from the last version. It's really good. So I'm going to grab the rest of their stuff. And uh, you'll probably see me checking out this again. All right, guys and gals. Thanks for hanging out. And since you're already here on YouTube, check out one of these videos on your screen now. All right, guys and gals, we'll see you next time. Have a great day, y'all.